By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to use keyframe graphs in CapCut PC like a pro. I will cover everything you need to know plus practical examples on how to use it. All right, guys, let's get started. So we have a car PNG and also a background in the timeline. I'm going to use this file to show you guys about keyframe graphs. For us to see the keyframe graphs, we need to set a keyframe point on the media file. So I'm going to take my player here, set first keyframe on transform. Then I can go few frames ahead and set second keyframe on transform. Then on this side, I'm going to use this arrow to go to the previous keyframe, drag my media file to this side of the screen. Then I'm going to take it to the second keyframe and drag it to this side of the screen so now i have two keyframe points set with the different values by the way if you want a detailed video when it comes to keyframes you can check the card up here and also link will be in the description below i already did a video on that now for us to get access to the keyframe graphs we can right click on the file and go to show variable speed animation or we can use the shortcut key option or alt k and now when you look at the animation we only did changes with the x value so we're going to click on this to open Open the x value let me close the scale since we did nothing on that part now when you look at the line we have a linear straight line giving us that constant speed and when it comes to animation most of the time you don't want this constant speed you want to add a bit of smoothness to the curve now when you go to the top here we have some presets sitting on this side for us to activate that we need to click on that point under the x value and it's going to activate that right on this side so this is the ending point and this is the starting point of our keyframe with that selected when i hover around the first one is going to be the preset when you click on that it's going to bring you this window we're going to cover this later on in this tutorial let me close that now next to it we have the linear curve which is already shown on this side that's giving us the straight constant speed next to it we have the auto curve when i click on that see what it does it creates this ramp at the top and it adds these controls to it so what this means is whenever the top is giving you this ramp it shows that that part is going to be slowed let me play and show you guys when it starts and gets to that side you can see it slows down towards the ending that's what it's creating on this side so this handles this what it does if i want to slow it more on the ending part i can just hold the handle and stretch it towards this side when you look i'm adding more to the curve now when i play it's going to really slow down at the end. And when you're moving this handle, make sure it stays on the straight line. Don't let it go up and down. It's going to create this weird overshoot that we don't like. Now, let me show you one thing with these controls. When I click on it and I drag it down towards this side, you can see what it's creating over here. So this time around, it's going to increase the speed right at this side. When I play and show you guys, you can see what it's doing it's giving us the fast ending so this is the opposite of the ramp so just put that in your head whenever it's ramp it's going to be slow whenever it goes in this way it's going to be pretty fast now let me undo that to linear curve and next to it we have the free curve this is basically just like the auto curve giving you the window or the freedom to control this very handle now let's go to the starting and let me show you with the starting point click on that and let's take this off to linear curve let's click on the starting point then let's turn that to auto curve now this is what it also means whenever the curve goes towards this side it means you're slowing down the beginning part let me play and show you guys you can see it's going to slow down at the beginning and now just like we did at the ending point if you really want to slow it down we can just move the handles towards this side and when you look at the curve carefully, you can see I'm slowing down, increasing the curve. And now when I play, it's going to really slow down at the beginning. And now just like what we covered, when I click on the handle and I move it towards this side, it's going to increase the speed at the beginning. Let me play and show you guys. You can see what it does. The beginning is going to go fast. If I'm moving a bit fast, don't worry. I break this down much more slower inside my complete CapCut course, plus a bunch of advanced tricks and tips I don't cover here on YouTube. If you want to level up your edit and know how to edit reels, YouTube videos, podcast intro, you can check it out. Link will be in the description below. And now let's talk about the preset curve. So when it comes to the preset, we're going to divide it into four categories. When we click on that, it's going to bring us this window. 
we are not going to use this since it's going to already set it at a linear speed just like this now we're going to talk about the in animations that is the is in quad in and cubic in so when you look carefully at the shape of the in animation curves you can see right from the beginning that's the starting point it all have this curve on this side which means the beginning part is going to be slow and then the ending part is going to be fast so with the is in it's going to give you slow start and fast end then when you go to quad in is going to give you slower start and faster end then when you go to cubic in it's going to give you slower start and then fastest end i use this in animation preset mostly to introduce characters let me show you guys so i have this I'm going to drag it in the timeline. This is me fixing my head on some random image. So I'll take my player somewhere here in the timeline. Then I'm going to drop a keyframe on transform. On that point, I'm going to take it all the way on the screen. It works perfectly when it's coming out of the screen. Then I can go somewhere 10 or 15 frames ahead. And I'm going to bring it towards this side. Now I can just use the shortcut key, optional alt key for the graphs. Click on the X values. That was what I was doing the changes then I can click on this line click on this to bring the preset curve I'll go with one of them I'm gonna use quad in and now when we look at it it's gonna give us this nice animation from here what we can do is we can make a compound clip of this optional alt G then with that selected we can go to the right side turn on motion blur you can see what the motion blur is doing it's gonna make our animations really smooth now I can take it all the way to 20 or 20 five and i can blend it in nicely and now when i play and show you guys it's gonna have this nice animation two out animation preset this is the complete opposite of the in animation preset when you look at the shape on the screen you can see all of them are having this ramp on the end giving us this slow ending part with the ease out it's gonna give us fast start and slow end then when you go to quad out that's gonna give us faster start and slower end then when you go to cubic out that's gonna give us faster start and slowest end so i use this mostly for icon and logos when they are coming out of the screen let me show you guys with this very youtube logo let me reduce the size of it take it somewhere here and drop a first keyframe on transform now i can go a few frames ahead and drop second keyframe on transform now we can take it to the first keyframe using this control it's going to take us there then on that side let me minimize this I'm going to take it all the way down here and I'm going to rotate it a bit. Now I can just press optional alt K for this to come out. This time around, we were moving on the Y axis. So I'll go straight to Y axis, click on this, go to this side. And now I can go for one of them. I'm going to go for cubic out. I want it to really slow down when it comes to the ending part. Then I'm going to close that. And because we were using the rotate parameter tool, we need to click and open that. Click on this go to this side to bring the preset out and we will go for the same preset curve that's the cubic out select that and it's going to give you that same look now let me show you one thing too when it comes to the keyframe graphs let me undo everything and let me close this keyframe graphs optional alt key now with the newer versions when it comes to CapCut, you can easily right click on the second keyframe point and go to show all presets it's going to give you this preset right away without doing it on all the individual parameters now i want to add cubic out to whatever parameters i was changing the values so i can easily select cubic out and it's going to affect all the parameters let me show you guys close this optional alt k to open it you can can see it's affecting it right away and now the third part in my opinion this is the combination of the in and out animation preset so when it comes to this part of the animation it's going to give us slow start fast middle and slow ending and let's talk about the ease and quad ease so ease and quad ease are almost the same they are identical when you look at the animation on the screen and now when it comes to cubic ease and circular ease with the cubic ease that's going to give you slower start faster in the middle and slower at the end then when you go to circular is that's going to give you slower start fastest in the middle and slowest at the end i use this preset curves mostly for animations on screen just like this car i have this two keyframe point and it's moving from one part of the screen to the other part so with this i'll just click on this go to the preset and i can select one of them when you click on cubic is you can see what it does and also when you click on circular is you can see and now the last set this comes 
in handy when you're creating animations with anticipation and follow through. Let me show you guys with this car PNG file. So we have it at a linear speed. When you select rebound, you can see what it does. It creates this anticipation before it moves to the final destination. And the final destination moves really fast when you look at the curve on this side. Let me show you the rebound out. When I click on that, that's going to give us the opposite of what we did. It's going to give us this follow through at the ending when you look at it. And when it comes to this animation preset, I mostly use it on logos when they are zooming in on the screen. So I have this ChatGPT logo drag in the timeline. Take my player somewhere here and just reduce the size of it. And I can rotate it a bit more on this side too. Make sure I set keyframe point on that very part. Then I can take it a bit ahead on this side, set a second keyframe on transform, increase the size and change rotate to zero. Now when you play, it's gonna give us this constant speed on the screen. Now all I have to do, if you remember, I can easily right click on this point and go to show up preset. Then I can choose, let's go for rebound out when it comes to this, I'm gonna select that. So you can see when it comes on the screen, it bounces a bit and then it goes back to the normal position. Now let me close that and take my player somewhere here in the timeline and set a second keyframe on that side. Now I can take it ahead a bit and take the scale value to one and also rotate it a bit, let's say minus 40. Now all I have to do is right click on the second keyframe point, show a preset and this time around, I'm going to select the opposite, which is the rebound in. Select that and you can see what it does. It anticipates a bit before disappearing on the screen. And now when you play and look at it on the screen, it's going to give us this nice zoom in and then zoom out on the screen. Now, if you want to know more when it comes to motion graphics in CopCut PC, you can check on this video. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.